Let's go back to then, okay? Then, what we were told. The Texas Department of uh, Public Safety um, and their Lieutenant Chris Oliveira said that police engaged with the gunmen. So this is what we even talked about on this show. I said it, yeah. You said it. You screwed up? I know. I, I believe no, you didn't screw it. Yeah, you screwed up. You trusted yeah. him. <laughs> Uh, said that he engaged with the gunman as he entered the school. And it's just, a, it's, by the way, it happens to be an inaccuracy that makes his guys look more heroic than the cowards they were. At that point, we had local law enforcement, uh, school officers, as well as state troopers uh, who were first on scene and were able to hear the actual gunshots inside the classroom. They tried to make entry into the building. They were met with gunfire by the suspect, by the shooter. Some of those officers were shot. So at that point, they began breaking windows around the school, trying to evacuate children, teachers, anybody they could, uh, trying to get them out of that building, out of that school. Okay. You'd think if someone had the correct information at that point, you wouldn't expect a couple of comics and a smart guy here in a, in a studio to have it. Yeah. But you would think Pablo the lieutenant. Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they said a resource officer confronted the gunman as he right. was going into the school, but didn't engage. So how did this guy not know? Yeah. Well, the next day, Lieutenant Oliveira said there, well, it actually didn't happen. A day later. Officers are there. The initial officers, they received gunfire. They don't make entry initially because of the gunfire they're receiving. It was reported that a school district police officer confronted the suspect that was making entry. By your guys? Not accurate. He walked in unrestructed initially. Oops. I hope one of those balloons don't pop. They might all shit their pants. <laughs> <laughs> Good they wore brown. But at least they get to go home that night. And look. Yeah. You're, you're listening, and I want to be clear, because I was just pulled over by some police officers yesterday. I wasn't pulled over. They were, I was a quick trip, Talked and then, uh, yeah. then they saw me, and they were like, knocked my window, like, hey, we just, you know, just so you know, we kind of like your show and stuff. And I said, do you know that we're all pissed off with police right now? I said, I'm not a Black Lives Matter guy. I'm not a defund the police. But do you understand why we're pissed off? He said, I get it. I get it. I said, you know, people saying that your, prim your primary priority is to go home that night. The guy said, not when there are kids being shot. I said, exactly. Not when there are children being shot. So this is the problem, too, before I get into the exact timeline. Down to the second. Um, this is the problem with, we discussed this last week, where they were saying, we want more LGBTQ officers. We want more black officers. No, 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 no. We want more officers of character. But that would require judgment, right? This is a society where we don't judge anybody. We accept everyone's reality as though it is reality. Yeah. We need officers with character. And I will tell you this. If people are being mowed down in a classroom and you had every warning and ample time to stop them, but you weren't ready, you didn't have enough cover fire, I'm sorry, that's, yes, don't take the oath. Don't take the oath. Your priority is not to go home. Your priority at that point is to make sure that those six, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds go home. And there are many, many instances here of the police officers abdicating duty, abandoning their post. And it's not in line with what training should be. I don't know what it is in this department. So police officers, not all cops. But you know what? You do need to clean ranks. As far as the shitty cops, and I'm not talking about cops who just pull over black people, you know, for driving while black. That's not what this is about. This is about the, really, the primary duty of a police officer. It's not to give out speeding tickets when you're hiding behind an overpass. I know you get more civilian interactions, and so you get your promotions that way. No, it's about laying down your life for people who require protection, namely the most vulnerable among us, like children. Okay, so let's go through the timeline. 11 a.m. Shooter posted on Facebook that he was going to shoot his grandmother. And he did. Shot her in the face. Yeah. She went to the neighbor and called 911. She's a hero. Tough old broad. Yes. Good for her. There's a hero. Approximately uh, 1115. He then posted on Facebook that he planned to shoot up the school. Hey, you know, there's an algorithm on Facebook and there's an algorithm on YouTube that if we have a thumbnail with a gun in it, yeah. it'll be throttled and notifications won't go out. If you guys are so advanced, how about screening for I am going to shoot up a school if you're going to? Or just There's no way they didn't see that. Yeah, just the there's words, no way. I am going to shoot. Right. Maybe that ought to pop a flag. You, you guys right. are at warp speed to get us taken down when we're doing parody. You have to make exceptions for people reviewing the comedic classic Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Yeah, somebody made a uh, video with Van Halen's music. They yes. to get to oh, well, it. Sorry. Okay. So 1127, uh, there was a video that showed the door to the That's school really, propped open. really important, by the yeah. way. That the was door the was open. Entry. It was open before all of this started. Right. Now, here's the thing. I understand that sometimes if there's a break and there was some kind of a ceremony going on, you're not going to scan everyone's ID card and the door is going to be open. 
Once you hear a crash in shooting outside, however, probably a good idea to close it. Yeah. The teacher didn't. Yeah. Not a hero, just to be clear. Just to be clear. Grandma, hero. Teacher, not. I know you want us to believe these are all the true, these are all the real heroes. No, no, the real heroes are people who act heroically. And no, teaching a Zoom class that's really tired and grading papers after hours doesn't count. I can see her being panicked, though, and relying on a police force. Yeah. I mean, you may have forgotten that she may have forgotten that she did it. She may have been scared. And I think most police, by the way, would probably have done a lot different. I'm very confused by this entire So, precinct. Well, I think it'll clear it up with the, with the time. So yeah. 1127, the door is open. Okay. Then 1128, this psychopath crashes the truck. Uh, near the school. I don't know if we have a picture of the truck crash. It looks like a cartoon know. crash. The, yeah, wheels the wheels go out. It yeah. looks yeah, like one of those, crazy. you know, like a yeah. like a truck that's like a, a has a personality. It's like, <laughs> oh, I'm tired and goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even look real. So he no. crashes out there. It looks like Toontown. Teacher saw the crash. Went inside, called 911. This is now the second 911 call. Still have the door open. That's the teacher who propped the door open to begin with. Propped as well. the door open, called yeah. 911. So in other words, we now know this has been posted. There have been 911 calls that he's going to go shoot up the school. Door is open, okay, crash outside, she calls 911, this teacher or teacher, yeah, I think it was a, well, the teacher was a female, right? Because then I'm trying to get, make so, sure yeah. I have everything, everything correct here because there are people who came in who weren't in the police force and there were people who weren't necessarily teaching in that classroom, yeah. but everything that I tell you, all references available at lightwithcrowder.com, this is an important timeline. Call 911, second call to 911, still leaving the door open. Now, you had two nearby men, they approached a suspect, uh, the gun shot, the, shot at them, they weren't injured, okay. 11.30 a.m., 911 was called, crash was reported. The name of the teacher is being covered anonymously in reports probably because she left the door open. So uh, 11.31, police arrive. They don't initially see the gunman. The gunman was shooting at the school from behind parked cars in the parking lot. So first off, this is someone who's clearly mentally disturbed. I want to know why did he crash his car? What I yeah. mean, he, was he inebriated? And then he's shooting at the school from behind a parked car in the parking lot. Yeah. And at this point, how are, there's two 911 calls. He's not even in the school. He's shooting at the school. Where are you, cops? Shoot him now. Now. They're 10 minutes late already. Yes. They're, it should have been at the crash. Right. Should have been at the crash. Should have been at the crash. The guy gets out. Oh, wait, Stephen Williford with the Sutherland Springs shooting. What happened? The guy shot up a church, got in his car, Stephen Williford, between... I can't remember if it was getting out of his car or if it was while he was driving, but between the two shootings that the man had planned, Stephen Williford shot him and killed him. Just a random good guy with a gun. Yeah. NRA certified instructor, by the way. Now we have 11.33 a.m. The gun, uh, gunman entered the school through the door that was left open. Fired more than 100 rounds. There's audio evidence. And uh, he entered into one of the rooms. It's either 111 or 112. I don't want to give you the wrong number right now because we don't know exactly what it was. Um, the earlier reports, like we saw, they said that he was met, engaged by a school resource officer. That's not true. Okay. So we are now at the point where the man has threatened on Facebook, has shot his grandmother, who then called 911 and said, he is out there. He has posted twice publicly on Facebook, one of which is saying, I'm going to shoot the school. He has crashed his car. There have been another two 911 calls placed, gotten out of his car, and shot in the parking lot at the school and now he has gone into the school and fired 100 rounds. No one's engaged him yet. You don't know, man. You don't know how hard it is to be a cop. You know what? You're right. But here's the thing. I haven't tasted a shit stew. I'm willing to bet that it sucks. That's true. Not, I've not been a police officer. I think this is a bad job. So now at 1135, finally, three officers go through the school. Same door. Thank God. Problem solved. Oh, wait, they briefly exchanged fire with the shooter. Two were grazed, and then more officers entered the school afterward. That's four, four more officers, by the way. Every single law enforcement official around the country that talks about school shooting says you do not assume that it is a hostage situation. You assume that this person is on a killing spree, and time matters. You go in as quickly as possible. So now we've got six officers, right? Three and four, I think. Well, nobody Three and four or two and four. But a killing spree. Yeah. Yeah. Six what, or seven what, what were you going? You're going, oh, it's just this is dangerous. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the job.
Yeah. 100 rounds have been fired now, not including the rounds outside. You've had three 911 calls at this point. So at some point between the first, uh, first burst of shots and the second, there was a code black that was announced in the cafeteria. And uh, reportedly employees didn't even know what that meant. They said, code black? They said, huh? Just like they said, hey, officers, engage. What? I'm going to wait. 11.37. 16 more rounds. 11.43, school broadcast over Facebook that they were in lockdown. 11.51, more police arrived. Great, they did their job. How far into this do we have to get? 11.54, parents and police are now gathered outside the building. Now, here's the thing. I guess if the police were more concerned with engaging the gunmen than they were stopping the parents who were willing to lay down their lives to save their children from the gunmen. Instead, they were pepper spraying and restraining parents trying to get to their kids. It's like a real life mystic river, only the police are completely in the wrong. Here's a clip. I think you have that there, Token Owen. Yeah. Clip X. Trying to pull that up. Yeah, yeah, pull it up. All right. So for people who haven't seen this, look, this is why cops can't be the only people with guns. Let me tell you why. Let me, let me put this in a nutshell. Those cops weren't willing to defend those children with all of their firearms. Parents who didn't even have them were. They were willing to lay down their lives for their kids. The cops were not. Those parents should have guns. They have the right to defend their children. And you don't have the right to stop them. Not if you're not doing anything. Do we have that clip? Mm Here. Let me ask you this. Hopefully we don't get banned for this because, you know, hey, they talked about rioting and assaulting officers who did nothing wrong, right, with Black Lives Matter protests. If you're a parent and that's your kid in the school, kind of look, what do you do? I'm going in. Yeah, is there anything that stops you? Is there anything that stops you? Comment below. Comment below. Does that make you an extremist? Hasn't the cop kind of put themselves in a situation if they're stopping a parent that it's either the kid or discomfort for the police officer? And by discomfort, I mean, it could be a shove, could be a punch. What, would you not use any means necessary when over 100 rounds have been shot and 911 calls have been made and there are six or seven officers who are already in that school doing jack shit? Who cares if trying to get 50 people grabbing them like Stalin? Like, it just doesn't... It just doesn't make sense. They're screaming, the crying. They know there's kids in there. They're stopping parents. That's one cop who's not inside. Right. Yeah. They're going, we have to wait for we have to wait for SWAT because we don't have something to uh, break down the door. Hey, I don't know if you saw this. The school has a lot of windows. Yeah. Could be broken with a rock. Also, it's a high school classroom door. Well, they do have hollow doors in the way that they wedge themselves. You do need something that would actually break. It wouldn't be easy to break down the door, but that's not the only way in. Yeah. It's not the only way in. And they knew that it was still ongoing. You heard the parents say. They knew it was still ongoing. It's still going on. He's not dead yet. So now we're about an hour in. 12.03 p.m. We're about an hour in because this is an hour from when he said he was going to shoot his grandma, shot his grandma, and started. So an hour from there. And we're a good 20 minutes, half hour in here with the school. Not even counting the night before when he was sending out messages to people that people could have seen on the. And that that was not that girl's fault. People are going off on her. No, 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 no. No, we're an hour in from him shooting his grandmother who called 911. So it's 12.03 p.m. 19 officers Hmm. are inside the school at this point. There were three 911 calls made from inside the classroom by a girl student at 12.03, 12.10, 12.13. That's third, fourth, fifth. Recording that multiple people were dead, saying, where are the officers? Sorry, sweetheart. They're the only people allowed to have guns. So don't act like you have the corner on outrage because students were killed. It is outrageous. It's disgusting. It's evil. But it's also evil to say only these people can have guns. Who, by the way, we've 
been saying for years are completely ill-equipped, and we've ensured that they are less equipped because we've defunded them in many instances. She's saying, where are the cops? What is she saying? Where are the people with guns to stop this guy with a gun? That's what she's saying. That's fourth and fifth calls. And there are 19 officers in the school not doing anything? 12-11. An officer announced that the parents, uh, sorry, to the parents that the students would be moved to the nearby funeral home for reunif reunification even though they hadn't been saved yet. Yeah, I think they had evacuated some parts of like the other wings of the building. Right. But, but that's the, it. But in other words, the parents are pissed going, what about my kids? Right. Oh, that's an ongoing situation. What do you mean by that? We're not doing anything. We're monitoring. 1215. Border Patrol uh, tactical units began arriving. 1216 and 1219, that same student dialed 911. These are now the sixth and seventh calls. Yeah. Why don't you just call the cops? Why do you need a gun? I understand that a student girl is not going to have a gun, but this same situation occurs all the time if you look at police response times across the United States. Why don't you just call the only guys with guns? You mean the guys who you said are corrupt and just want to shoot black people? Which I don't believe is true because statistically it is untrue, but I do believe that they're inept bureaucracies as we see with this police department. 1217, the school posted on Facebook there was an active shooter. Well, thank you. Thank you for that news alert. Shooter began firing again. 1221. Possibly at the door. We don't know exactly. 1230. School announced on Facebook that reunification would actually be at the high school. They seem really concerned with, hey, here's the meeting place. Like it's at a theme park. We're gonna meet by the uh, we're gonna meet by the big uh, the big drop roller coaster. Okay, guys, let's meet back here. Hey, how about you save the people who are in a room with a gunman? And by the way, I don't want to tell you how you do your job, but you've got dozens of guys with guns. Are they all stupid or are they all pussies? 12.36 p.m. Female student from inside the classroom called 911 again. That's the eighth 911 call. She was told to stay on the line. Then at 12.43 and at 12.47, she told them, send police now. 12.40, the school posted to Facebook again to change the reunification location to the Civic Center. Well, thank you, school. Thank you, real heroes, for making sure that the people who aren't in an absolute melee know where to go. 12.50, the police finally got the, wait for it, the key to unlock the door. Oh, oh, hold on a second. Our police force there, the Uvalde police, are so equipped that who'd have thought the door would need a key, asshole? Didn't you have a contingency plan? You're the police force. This, you're sworn to serve and protect. And a guy locks the door and that screws your whole plan right there. You should be the only guys with guns. Do you know how many keys are on a janitor's ring? I know. That's a lot. Especially if it's a cartoon janitor. I know. Sorry, I don't mean to make light no, of it. No, it's, it's okay. Insanely stupid that I can't wrap my head around it. And by the way, a couple of things. This is not, again, to be clear, this is not what they're trained to do. Not at all. This is why we talked about. Remember, they, they wanted to ban chokeholds. Yeah. Because right? society says ban chokeholds. Not only that, but they want to ban officers like that, Mr. Kerr, that coach. Ban officers in Oakland. Yeah. So they don't want officers at schools, which, uh, you know what? Maybe you guys have a point if they're all going to be like this. Right. But uh, they don't want officers at school, uh, at schools. They don't want chokeholds. They don't want lethal weapons. Remember, they want them to have tasers, cops. Like, the fewer, fewer of them should have firearms. Yeah, and, and less funding would definitely get the, get better quality officers. Right, Absolutely. yeah, exactly. Sure. Makes perfect sense. And we got uh, flack for saying, well, no, you shouldn't ban chokeholds because that is just, again, it's a lack of education. It's not understanding the use of a chokehold, and we showed it here on the show. People say, oh, we need to, what? We need to have police officers who are less equipped to deal with violence. Hey, you know what? How about you send in the social workers? Maybe they have some kind of a universal key. I don't know. Send in the social workers to deal with them. This is why you're not looking for LGBTQ or black officers or female officers. You're looking for officers who are capable of good character and willing to go in and cause irreparable harm to someone who needs it. When appropriate. When appropriate. That guy shooting up those kids, yeah. that's a weak man. That's a weak man. That's a weak man. You need a strong man. You're an officer to go in and help handle that. Yep, might be outgunned. Yep, might not be prepared. Guess what? That's what you signed up for. Yeah. I follow a couple of special forces guys on Twitter, and they were saying that it is impossible, it is physically impossible for one person to hold a room 
that has the windows and has the door. There's no way. There's absolutely no way with even the most basic training for that person to be able to withstand some kind of an onslaught from cops. There, there's no way. How about citizens? Yeah. How about citizens? The door, the, the windows can be broken with a rock. Now, I'm not saying that this is the exact strategy, but how about lining, how about sneaking up like a firing squad? There he is. Shoot until you hear it go click at the shooter. Tell the girl who's already on 911 with the police who aren't doing anything to inform her fellow classmates to get down or find cover wherever they can. There could be collateral damage. I understand, and that's absolutely terrible. But at this point, they will all be collateral damage unless right. something is done. Shoot through the window at the shooter. Cops can't do it. Because I gotta wait uh, for my, uh, I gotta wait for my superior, and I gotta wait. For, I don't want to get written up for this. Guess what? Those parents were willing to. Now, yeah. here's the thing: they did this wrong, even after they just had performed training only a handful of weeks before the shooting. Yeah. And according to the New York Times, the training states that officers' first priority is to move in and confront the attacker. They did not do that. Why? Out of fear. The problem is not guns. The problem is not police. The problem on both sides of this equation is weak. Men. Yeah, you don't want to die a hero. Right. Well, people who are just concerned with their own safety, right? It's every single, every single toady in the movie. I was just doing my job. That's every police officer here. Yeah. And it's 19 fine to, people? Yeah, it's fine to be concerned with your own safety. You just have to pick a different job. Yes. If you're that concerned, you have to pick a different job. Your job is to run towards gunfire, not away from it. Yep. Well, give and me not a to gun. prevent parents but from running towards it to save their kids. If my kid's in there, give me a gun. Yeah. I'll go in there. You can. I will go as, as far as my adrenaline will take me. Well, they would probably be in there in record time if your kid wasn't wearing his N95 during the reintroduction to school. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, well, then, of course, that, then you should be, of course, tasing the parents. Or if you went in to have some words with the teacher because your daughter was sexually assaulted by a uh, boy claiming to be a girl in the restroom, they'll tackle you for that. Yes. So this is the problem that people see. And again, it's not all police officers, but you guys need to clean ranks. This is where, this is where police officers can say, hey, hey, that's not what we do. And if, if it is what you, that's not what we're supposed to do. None of this blue wall of silence. And that doesn't always happen. But I was speaking with some police officers here this week. And they, they didn't know. They were going, yeah, I hear the shooter. He was there for like a, something. He was there a while. I'm going, don't you know this? Shouldn't you guys be having a PowerPoint presentation on t how to not be a cop? How to not handle an active shooter situation? They should be teaching you this now. If you're a cop and you don't know exactly this timeline that I'm, I am laying out right now, you're bad at your job. The only point to mistakes being made in life is so you can learn from them. So let's also look at the Uvalde training explicitly stated. Again, just so people know, these are weak, cowardly men. This isn't even the training protocol. It's not the training. It's not the firearm. It's weak men. Training says, as first responders, we must recognize that innocent life must be defended. First responder unwilling to place the lives of the innocent above their own safety should consider another career field. Well, that message must have fallen on deaf ears. Also, by the way, this is case in point. It was an off-duty Border Patrol agent, you know those evil people yeah, yeah, yeah. who put people in cages. Off-duty who heard about it from a woman who I believe was a teacher in the school, borrowed someone else's gun, was the person who went in and stopped the shooter. Now, now I know what you're thinking. Was it one of those malicious people with rent? No. One. One non-working police officer with a borrowed gun fixed with 19 officers and a set-up perimeter and a digital compound satellite truck couldn't do. What do you think? A good, you think some random good guy with a gun is going to stop? Yep. Yeah. Yep, and, and I think in many instances they're more effective than police officers. And what is he, a hero? Oh, and he's also, what's the word? Alive. Yes. 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 Oh, that's odd. Yeah. I wonder if 19 people could have stayed alive had they gone in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well 19 it, people did. Cops. Yeah. Uvalde basically said they wanted everybody to be trained uh, and ready for an active shooter situation eight weeks prior to this incident, by the way. Eight weeks prior, they had training. And that training probably included something like locking doors and barricading yourself in classrooms. You know what the training didn't include? A couple of people on campus that were concealed carry permit holders that were willing to go and get a gun to go and stop the bad guy. Because if that had happened, if that had been part of the protocol, this may have ended much, much differently yeah. early on. That has to be a part of the training. Otherwise, we're just playing at this. We're not actually trying to do anything. No, we could have banned all guns, though, and then it could have just gone ah, on for yeah. way longer. Yeah. yeah. 
More that would have been a better idea. Have, yeah, right. That, that's got to be it. Well, there were other. There was a woman who uh, you know saved her two children. We're hearing more reports yeah. and stories, and there were other teachers who were clearing other rooms. But in many instances, these people didn't have firearms, so they're not able to do anything other than yeah. get the other people who aren't right in front of the shooter's destruct- destructive path out of the way. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that teachers should be forced to own guns. No one is no. saying that. No, no, no. But especially when you look at the, the LGBTQ AIP experiment that's taking place where they freak out if they can't tell their students about who they're scissoring that weekend. I don't want those people to be forced to own firearms, but I do want people, teachers, who want to own firearms or faculty who want to own firearms who can carry firearms everywhere else in the country because they are law-abiding citizens. By the way, less likely to commit crimes than off-duty officers concealed carry permit holders. Just to be clear. I want them to have access to, if we're talking about defunding, well, hold on a second. How about we provide funding so that they have free training? There you go. How about this? Got, got it right here. Joe Biden, you want to give everybody in America that has student debt $10,000 off of their student debt right now. How about this? How about we give every single school $5,000 to give to two individuals to pay them every single year to have concealed carry and to be able to go in and stop these situations? Yeah, I training. Think we would, I think we would absolutely fund that. We would probably vote on it today, and it would be passed and be on your desk tomorrow. And just to be clear, I'm not even just saying, well, you know what? The school should not be a gun-free zone, period, and anyone should be No, 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 look, look. No. How about a baby step? How about a compromise, right? A give and take. How about this? I will agree that if someone has a firearm in a school, whether it's a teacher, faculty member, dean, principal, whatever it is, that, unlike the citizen uh, you know, wh- whose rights cannot be infringed whatsoever— should be required to take more training. Yeah. Should be required to pass some kind of a test so that they show you that they can not only carry a firearm, but have some kind of a standard issue, whether it's a retention holster, make sure that there's a safe where it is locked in a location, have random checkups to make sure that this person is responsible, and that requires what? What? Funding, not defunding. Make it available to people who want to do it, and yes, make make it so they have to jump through a few hoops. There's a give and take. Oh, wait, no, Canada's going to ban handguns. Mm, that'll solve it. And that's what Beto O'Rourke yeah. wants to do here. Did you see Beto O'Rourke change his website three times? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Change his website three times from uh, not mentioning AR-15s to we want, you know, a ban on AR-15s to we want to reduce the number of AR-15s. Ah. Because he, too, is a weak man or pussy, whichever term you prefer. Pussy. That's the problem that we have in this country. We have a problem with weak people. And we've encouraged weakness. And weakness all around, and I'm not talking about bench pressing, okay? I'm talking about weakness of character. What do you, what do you think a generation of people are, how, where are they going to find strength and inspiration when you're praising the real heroes as people who go out there crying because they can't discuss their personal sex life, or God forbid, they can't do another Zoom call for the next year and a half? And by the way, is this something, can we at least say here that we told you so? That we to, what do you yeah. think was going to happen when you locked down students for a year and a half for fear of the parent, that wasn't for the kids. We all know that wasn't for the kids. If you look at the, if you look at the CDC data, right? if you look at how deadly COVID would be for kids, that was never for the kids. That was for the teachers, sorry, the real heroes that they may not get sick, even after vaccinations, even with masks and plexiglass in place. What did you think was going to happen when you locked down children, when you eliminated their social safety net for a year and a half? And by the way, I know I can already hear what you're about to say. No, it's not at all the same as homeschooling. Because guess what? You can homeschool a kid, and then you can take him to uh, anywhere else that isn't locked down like a desolate wasteland. No, you lock students down, then you lock them down from other activities and interactions. And we saw, you can go back to the previous show, reference available at lottowithcarter.com. We saw substance abuse go up. We saw suicides go up. We saw mental health issues go up. And we said, you are going to have a mental health epidemic. You are going to cause irreparable damage to these children. And there were many people who were saying that. But none of it mattered because COVID was the political clout du jour. Yeah. Can, can anyone out there honestly say that we didn't see the destabilizing happening? I know you want to blame guns. And, we can talk, and, and plenty of you have talked about guns. But this is something that we directly said would happen and experts said would happen. Here's something else. This is why it's so evil to rob those parents of the ability to defend their children. And again, saying only police can have guns. Rape is illegal. We all agree rape should be illegal. This is not one of those issues up for debate. Okay. Do we all acknowledge that rapes are still going to happen? Of course we know. We we can have more effective policies. We can have more effective policing. We can look and see what is it. What is it that we can do objectively to reduce the number of rapes? But we still have to understand that rapes will happen. And so then you have to say, what is the more morally acceptable act at that point. 
knowing that there will still be rapists. Robbing a woman of her right to self-defense so she has to sit there and take it, or understanding that some human beings are evil, at least giving her a fighting chance, at least giving those parents a fighting chance, at least giving that teacher a fighting chance. In other words, even if you banned all guns, which is not going to happen in this country, you still acknowledge, no one likes to hear this, doesn't mean that we're not empathetic, doesn't mean that we don't care about the lives lost. Can we all acknowledge this is still going to happen? You can never stop all evil weak men. You never can. So then it comes down to, why did Gandhi say of all the British Empire's act of evil robbing a nation of arms will be its blackest? Gandhi, you know him for fasting. Why did he say that? Because it is an act of evil to rob someone of their right to defend themselves. The likes of which society before the last century could never even comprehend. Just because it involved boom boom sticks doesn't make it any different. Humanity, since the beginning of time, has been evil, and it's largely been an exercise in how do we contain or how do we give the non-evil a chance to defend themselves against evil. That's a huge part of humanity. That and resources. You're never going to stop all of it, just like you're never going to stop all rapes. You need to give the victims a fighting chance. Especially, especially now when we see Statistically, empirically, and now anecdotally with this shooting, that's undeniable. The reason that the police officers should not be the only ones with guns, I will repeat it, is because they were not willing to lay down their lives for those children. Their parents were. Their parents have the right to own guns and lay down their lives for their children. 